guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new I don't work here lady content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled Well, at least she could read. So happened about a week ago. I had a meeting at work and was recently promoted so I decided to wear a collared company shirt I bought a couple years back with slacks and a nice set of professional shoes. My wife had given me a honey pick up list, so after the meeting I stopped by America's favorite, two in every town, store fall dart. Now it was a small list, three easily carried items, so I didn't even grab a cart or anything. As I am moving through an aisle to grab the first thing a sweet little old lady asks for my help reaching something on a top shelf. No problem, she asked nicely, I'm tall and I don't actually mind helping. My wife will actually see people having issues and volunteer me from time to time. It's all cool. As I had it to her and she smiles thanking me I get tapped on the shoulder, one of those, bony nun finger, type of taps. Hey come with me. You need to take care of your employee. Now, mind instantly realized I must look like a manager and a Karen found me. Still. I'm sorry ma'am I don't work here. I don't care if your corporate or local follow me. Duck it this could be fun. So I follow her and a couple aisles away as a lady tasked to do shopping for those online orders with four partially filled totes. I can't find my crap and she won't show me where it is. You need to reprimand this employee. Poor employee tried to keep smiling despite looking so tired and fed up with life in general. Ma'am I'm sure she is just following the directions of her boss but I don't work here. It does seem that you need some help though. Do you need my help? As I said that I pulled down and straightened the chest of my shirt in case of wrinkles and pointed to the slogan under the company crest, helping individuals with disabilities in living independent and fulfilling lives. I really do love helping people and work for a company that works with people with mental and physical disabilities. She glanced down, got a confused look on her face and looked back up at me which I had been waiting for. Extending one hand towards her, ma'am, do you have staff or family here with you? Are you in need of assistance? She got red and started making a squeaky, choking noise. She then started looking really pissed but unsure of what to say. She finally clenched her jaw and just stormed off. I turned showing my shirt to the actual employee and wished her a good day as she tried not to laugh. Sadly, I didn't see or hear anything else from the lady the rest of my visit. The next story is titled Incompetent Boss Forgot I Quit and Calls to Ask Why I Didn't Show Up to My Shift. I have worked a lot of bad jobs in my life, but I left home at 19 and needed a job to pay rent while I was at uni. I worked for a massive supermarket chain, and for those of you that live down under, it was the red one. Anyway these stores are horribly managed, usually understaffed and they don't give a crap about their workers. The job. It wasn't glamorous, I cleaned departments after they closed, think moldy fridges and chicken ovens that had been running all day, as well as collecting shopping trolleys no matter the weather. Now, this company has absolutely zero regard for the safety of their workers. Over my four years I'd had broken my coccyx, received chemical burns and thrown my back out no less than three times. As I said poorly managed and understaffed. As a result of the horrible working conditions they had trouble finding long-term employees and I ended up training someone for whichever store a couple of times a month. Eventually I decided to move on as I'd saved a bit of money and took some advice from friends and let the fear be my motivation. So I gave my two weeks notice, over the phone, text and email just to be 100% sure they got the memo, spoiler, they didn't. The manager. Let's call him John. John was the epitome of incompetent, he would come to train me on a new way to clean chicken ovens and then complain he was getting grease on his new $500 shoes. He once came in as support during a particularly busy period but wouldn't help because despite being at my estimate in his mid to late 30s he still lived with his mother, who did all his washing, and she didn't like it when he came home dirty etc. There are plenty of examples of John's stupidity but I digress. Finally after four years of working my ass off and requesting a transfer to a different department, due to my multiple at work injuries, I just quit. As previously mentioned I gave plenty of notice and went above and beyond to ensure he knew. Anyway as my last two weeks pass, everyone in the store knows I am leaving and I am expecting to train my replacement any day, but no one shows up. 
Now I work alone and there was only one other guy doing my job on the nights I wasn't at work but he got lots of complaints and by all accounts wasn't very good. So I've worked my last day and said my goodbyes, and I'm already employed with another company, where I still work and love my job. Sunday rolls around and I normally have a 9 hour shift I work alone but not today because I'd left that toxic hellhole in the rear view. Then John calls. Jay. Hi pajama soup, I was just wondering why you didn't show up to your shift today? Me. Sorry John the first don't work for you anymore. Jay. What I thought your end date was, someday a few weeks away, me. Nope as per our phone call, my text and my email my last day was a few days ago Jay. Oh, well aw. Uh. Me. Yep, sorry, bye click. Most satisfying moment of my life. Several months later I got a call from another store asking if I could work a shift there. The next story is titled I can park wherever I want. I have 10 years of retail expertise and 12 years of teaching behind me. I've seen my fair share of entitled people. But this one oh boy. I live close to the beach. Like a 10 minute walk. As you can imagine, with nice days people park in our neighborhood, free parking, and walk to the beach. There is a lot of parking space, paid, closer be. Parking is quite enough for the residents but not for us and tourists who don't want to pay or can't get a parking space closer be. My DH and I decided to remove some poles from our front yard so that I can park my car there. It's small and fits just right and there is enough room to get the bikes out of the shed and things out of my car. Our front yard is our property to be very, very clear. Here is where the entitled people come into play. Last weekend the weather was quite nice. Not too cold, lovely sunny weather and overall pleasant foe the time of the year. DH and I took our son out to a petting zoo. We chose to go with my car so that my DH wouldn't have to drive circles around the neighborhood afterwards. After a couple of hours we come home to find someone parked in our front yard. Yeah no, not your house, not your yard so certainly not your parking space. We decide to call the non-emergency line from our local police station to ask for advice. They tell us to call a tow truck and that they would be coming over to supervise if needed. Okay, cool. Tow truck company is called, said they would be over in around 20 minutes. They had some other towing to do. TTC will be the tow truck crew, M. Entitled man EU. Entitled woman DH. My dear husband me, miniature elephant at this point. I decided to stay outside to wait for them. TTC comes, we show proof of residence and they start to do their job after getting some drinks from me. Mom always taught me to be kind and look after people even if they do the jobs you hired them for. They have their drinks, give a business card for the owners just in case and leave. I go to my car and put it back in our own front yard. 2.5 hours later our doorbell rings. The entitled people have returned from their extended walk on the beach. I open the door. M. Hello. Our car is supposed to be here. Me. Yes, it used to be. We had it towed as it was on our property. Eu. But there's no sign so we are allowed to park here. Me. No you're not. This is private property and we don't need to put a placard or something. We had checked that, M. You little liar. You just stole our car and sold it. Me. No I didn't. I have the phone number of the towing company, trying to hand them the card. Screaming ensues from the both of them. I'm still standing in the doorway, DH is throwing anxious glances from through our living room door. I'm 19 weeks pregnant and he doesn't like the sound of what is happening outside. Then the fun begins. M tries to force entry to our home. DH sees this, pushes M out and closes the door. Afterwards we dialed for some blue colored assistance. Meanwhile we have a pair of banshees at the front door, ringing the doorbell and pounding on the door. A couple of minutes later our blue colored assistants showed up. My DH was not having me near them again. He went outside where the entitlement came wafting through the air towards us. He explained the whole situation to the cops while the M and EU were screaming things like, liar, thief. DH even called the TTC and they affirmed they had towed a truck with the given license plate number. It came to a point where the cops gave the EC they had two options. Either leave willingly or leave with a couple of shiny bracelets on. They left screaming. TTC called us afterwards. Just to tell us how it went and ask if we were okay. Told us they had loads and loads of fun by messing with them a bit. Three times a guess what is screwed on our side of the shed? Yep, a note saying that our front yard is private property and cars will be towed. 
The next story is titled I don't work there anymore. About 20 years ago, I worked at the big blue box store as a cashier. Signed up for holiday work and hung on for another seven months. I was always in the top five for speed and got the shifts I requested without any fuss. Along comes June and my then boyfriend, now husband, gets scheduled for knee surgery and a job promotion is in the works, which would entail moving out of state. I take the first week of July off for our daughter's birthday, my BF surgery in the fourth. I'm off the schedule with no fanfare for that first week in July, and all is going to plan at home. Middle of July, I put in my two-week notice, so that I'd have a month to get the move going. I spent the rest of July, August finding us a place to live in the new state, making arrangements for a rental truck, purging stuff at home the usual things you do for a move. The beginning of August, I turn in my blue smock. I get a phone call at least once a week, for the next month, from the store, asking where I was that I was late for my shift. I remind them, politely, that I no longer work there, and to remove me from the schedule. The first two weeks, I'm told no one turned in my notice or noted me no longer working there, not even HR, and that if I don't come in, I'll lose my job and no longer be able to work for them. They don't seem to understand that I quit. Then it's, oh, so and so messed up and put you on. Sorry. We left at the beginning of September. All is good, or so I think. Then my sister calls from back home. She was my emergency contact for work. Guess who they called when it was discovered my phone was shut off. I called them, long distance charges, so this is costing me money kids, this was before cell phones or free long distance, and once again reminded them I was no longer employed by them. The HR person, who had started after I had left, was insisting that she and I met the other day about my schedule, and I needed to work it. Impossible, I tell her, because that day I was in XX state, driving a U-Haul to YY state, and neither of those states were her state of ZZ. Besides which, I had quit the month before. She apologized and hung up. This went on for another two months, before she finally told my sister that I was ineligible to work for the big blue box store ever again because of failing to show for my shifts for the last four months. It took big blue box store four months to fire me for not working there. In December, she called my sister and asked if I could pick up some holiday shifts. Facepalm. The next story is titled I can't give you a discount on pancake mix because I don't work here. I popped into the grocery store to get the ingredients for lasagna. While I was picking out a box of noodles, an angry Karen came waddling over with a box of pancake mix. The corner was dented and some pancake mix was spilling out. Karen. This is the last box of pancake mix and it's damaged. I need you to give me a discount. Me. Sorry I don't work here. Karen. Annoyed and pointing to my basket, seriously? You can't stop stocking shelves long enough to find your manager to give me a discount? Me. I'm not stocking shelves, this is just my basket of groceries. Karen. If you can't give me a discount just say so. Me. Let me see what I can do. Hang tight. Then I paid for my groceries and left. The next story is titled How much do you make a week? This is a story that my dad witnessed 30 or 40 years ago. He worked at a grocery store and the owner was a real poss. Would yell at staff on the store floor or if he didn't like a display he would destroy it by throwing the boxes of cereal on the floor and make them stack them the way he wanted. One day a young man came in that worked at a hardware store a few buildings down. They wore aprons like to the store staff, but a totally different color and style. It was the guy's break and he was slowly just looking for something for lunch. The store owner sees this and gets madder and madder as this guy is just lazily walking around. Finally, he can have no more of this and runs up to the guy, how much do you make a week? He responds, $25. The owner opens his wallet hands him a $50 and says, never come back you are fired. And storms off. Guy is like I don't work here but the owner has already stormed off. The next story is titled Get Off Your Break and Help Me. So my grandmother works at a hospital in the cafeteria. She always leaves early and sometimes will stop at a gas station beforehand to satisfy her unyielding thirst for Pepsi. She grabbed one of those big bottles of the soda, hoping it would take the edge off the bad day she knew she'd have. Then got into line, making sure to stand six feet away and wearing her mask correctly over her face, her two gloved hands carefully handling her prized soda. All of a sudden, she felt a tap on her shoulder, she turned to say, please stay six feet away from me, when Karen decides to interrupt her. Karen. Ma'am maybe you should go do your job so I don't have to wait in line. 
Your break can wait. My grandma. I don't work here. Karen. Yes you do, just because you're on your break doesn't mean you can't help me. My grandma. I don't work here. She then pulled out her hospital badge and shoved it in the Karen's face, and if someone's on a break it's a break and doesn't mean they have to bend over and wipe your ass. Now let me get my ducking Pepsi and get the duck away from me. The Karen stood shocked, and my grandma went, bought her Pepsi and left. Later that night she called me to tell me. And I couldn't stop laughing. I explained the whole Karen thing to her and she said, well that idiot was one. The next story is titled his mask just broke. Boyfriend and I just placed an order at a coffee and waffle place on our way out of Vegas. As we were heading outside to wait for our order, we run into another pair of customers. Kind of stare at each other for a moment, then the woman points at the man with her and asks me. Hey so, his mask just broke, do you guys have a spare? I blink for a moment, a bit confused, because who carries around spare masks if they have their own cloth one, but I did have a spare because I'd traveled on a plane and bought a pack of NK95s to use. I only needed one but ended up getting five. So, I said, yeah, actually. I should have one in the car. The woman's eyes widened, and she apologized a ton. I'm so sorry, I thought you worked here. As soon as the words came out of her mouth, I knew this was going on Reddit. I laughed and told her it was no problem and I'd be back in a minute. He got his mask, we got ducking tasty waffles and coffee, and I'm sure they did as well. Good way to start off the new year. The next story is titled he's a customer, and he's deaf. Had my roommate take me to whale mart last night, I was wearing average sign friendly clothes, dark shirt, blue button up over shirt that was open, black swim shorts, no yellow vest indicating I work for the mart of walls. Completely second hand. Some of you may recognize me from my account as I've posted some more wholesome stories on this subreddit. But I'm severely hard of hearing, so much so I claim to be deaf. I can't hear women and children, completely silent. That's important to this story. A female manager at the whale mart was apparently screaming and hollering at me for a solid 10 minutes before my roomie figured out WTF was going on, and got my attention. He had told the manager that was screaming at me that one, I'm a customer and two, I'm deaf. The manager went as white as a sheet of paper and apologized profusely. Silver lining. $10 gift card for not even knowing that I was getting screamed at by a banshee. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and post some bear emojis in the comments.